turn to ban. We all know that everybody, apart from Team Liquid in Western Europe, is starved for those DPC yes, points. Are. So they really, 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 really want to win. And uh, we're curious to see how teams are going to deal with the Medusa, banned or picked or ignored, maybe per gentleman's agreement. Oh, maybe. Heroes will farm in that way. Well, for sure. Quas, I know Quas Exhort Invoker beats Pango Lane or does well against Pango. Okay. Quas Wex does not, though. Okay, we're going to find out. Does this Invoker deliver or maybe it's just a fan service? Who knows? Let's see. OG versus Liquid Game 1. We're heading over to Sun's fan of Sinrin. Thank you. Invoker pick. My goodness. Very exciting stuff, Cinderman. OG versus Liquid in this best of three upper Beautiful bracket man. showdown. Hello. Hello. How are you? I, I'm I'm good. I mean, the, the last series, it, it had... Uh, I don't know. Were you, were you hopeful that the that the pregame interview thing was actually going to happen? That they would just sign a gentleman's agreement about not banning Dusa? But then it became a mind game. They're like, we don't really trust that you guys are going to right. that, so they banned it anyway. But yeah. it means we get to You're see right. something else because the story of the previous two games was really it was very Medusa centric, and now we're going to get something completely different. Um, Praise so, Gaben for that. As Shiva pointed out, the last time we saw this BZM Invoker, I think, who was it they played against? He was getting doomed all game. He went 115 and 1 in that game. Oh, she I think said it was against Shop and 1. So I think it was worse. Oh, it was way worse. I think it was against <laughs> Shopify Rebellion. Okay. And uh, Saberlight played Doom and actually just so hunted him the whole game. Yeah. And he just didn't okay. get to play. Uh, I think Invoker's matchups in this yeah. game are better um, overall. So this could be a, a redemption story for him. And I think he just wants to, you know. When you have a really bad game like that, you probably just want to, you know, prove what you've got. It is one of his best heroes. And sure. I will say he is already starting out with Exhort, so that answers one of the questions at least. Yeah. And looking at OG's lineup, they have so much like AOE zoning. They got the the pit, freezing field, blood right, brambles. If you get Cataclysm, that's going to be a pretty dirty spell. The minefield, I think. Yep. Well, they don't have techies for the minefield. That's true. But uh, that would also be. They could have had one more AOE ability yeah, then. That's true. Um. At the same time, though, you look at Liquid's heroes. I really like Liquid's draft. I think it has some of the really powerful things in this patch. They've got the Caudal Beastmaster, which I think is an outstanding opener. This lane is incredibly powerful. They have a good matchup for the Monkey King in the safe lane against Underlord. And I think the Pango Invoker matchup, like Jenkins says, I think it's probably true that Exort might pull ahead slightly here, whereas Wex would lose. But I don't think either way that Pango struggles. I think he's well, he might regard. struggle against the old rupture that they talked about. Uh, that will be a problem. Probably the biggest counter in the game for Pango. And the fact that you have to itemize a Lincoln feels forward. terrible. But Sania oh. probably has to go around the Brambles. A nice boundless strike coming out to try to save Insania. But it looks like first blood will go the way of Taiga on OG's side. Yeah, got caught in a really awkward position. The perfect Brambles. There was no really easy way around that to run back. So he had to take this awkward path and it ended up taking too long. That's really big news for OG, actually, because I think on a theoretical level, this lane is extremely hard as soon as Silencer and Monkey King reach level two or three. So getting that little bit of a head start up there is very, very nice for them. Uh, the first blood did go the way of Taiga. Not the Underlord, but still, the assist gold still nice and the experience. Well, Mind Control doesn't deserve the first blood because he did lie about them banning Medusa. True. So bad boy MC. Never thought he would lie, honestly. Uh, bad boy like for life. Innocent young child. Ah. So as we talked about BZM versus Nisha in the mid lane, uh, so far relatively even in the CS, obviously quite early. Kit Rack getting harassed out in the bot lane, but Yuragi's there to help clean up, and he's doing A-OK. -okay. Frostbite applied to Zai. Yuragi, yeah, they lose their, their CM, but... But Zai might get run down by Yuragi, but they are a little too close to that tier one tower to dive at this point. So this is a miserable lane for CM. She does not have good health. She does not have good health regen, and she's going to get spammed by axes and chakra. So they, they can just non-stop throw axes off cooldown whenever he has it. Just spam, spam, spam. They can blinding light her into a bad position. Um, I guess the good news for OG is that at the very least the carry, and I think this was also a part of the pick when they see the Caudal Beast, they want a carry that's sustainable against a lot of spam, and Bloodseeker really fits that bill, because imagine if your carry in this game was like a Terror Blade. You're just yeah. non-stop getting bullied out of lane uh, by these two. So I at least think this was a good solution from a carry perspective. Do you think, so here's a weird question, obviously CM in theory, or well not in theory, in practice very good against summons. Zai, I mean, we've seen this match before where Beastmaster just doesn't bother getting boards. Like yeah, I don't think there's any reason to. Just max out Axe's and Aura here. Taiga and MC getting chased out. Taiga getting pretty damn low. Pops the Shadow Realm to avoid that last right click. 
think he popped Shadow Realm salve as he, as he got grenaded, so the healing ah, salve now gone. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Best might time just have to walk there. back to base at this point. Pretty bad. Right over the Lotus here. Go the way of the Someone Keeper of the Light. Courier taken out as well. Axe is coming through. Remember, they just reduced the mana cost of that for some reason. There's a Blood Grenade onto Boxy, but he pops the Wand. Getting chased by Yuragi. Blood Right is there. Not going to connect, but he does get the kill via the right click, and we'll have to go through... What are we going to call this little area? That path, bridge of something. It reminds me of um, the bridge in the Mines of Moria. Yeah, I agree. Need to place Coddle over there for full lore. True. He's in the game. We could have it happen. It, if if Boxy stands there and blinding lights the Bloodseeker away, basically as close as you're going to get. And Valve might get copyright stricken from that one as well, of course, because the voice line would have to activate. Taiga getting chased out along with Yuragi in the bot lane. He doesn't have any support as of yet. Axes will connect, but so. he'll live through it. it but a good start bot pressure. for OG, you got to say, overall. Like, uh... Considering the overall power of the lane they're up against, if they can break even here, I think that's pretty good. Taiga still has not left the lane. He is just Too bad. sticking around with a super low HP. Oh, that's a good Sunstrike combo here. The tower. Sunstrike's coming as well. Will not hit. My goodness. Mm. Did not line that one up correctly. Yeah, I mean, from... you gotta land those if you don't want to go one in fifteen, no. bro. That's. Uh... <laughs> I mean, how important is it for BZN to be getting these sunstrike kills? Because in past patches, that was almost like built into the balance mm. of the hero when Exort was like the super popular build. This was years ago at this point, of course. I don't think it's particularly important for himself. It's just, just like a. It's nice really good for his for the bottom lane, I think, that he helps out. But he doesn't. He. Doesn't, I mean, you're not gonna say no to kill bounty, but I don't think it's. He's getting chased out by Mickey, who has now full Jingu stack. Shadow Realm popped by Taiga. It's a 1v1 battle from each side. And unfortunately for OG, Liquid gets the better of both 1v1s. Yeah. I, I can't say I'm surprised this top lane is going this way. And that's why it's twice as important that the, that the bot lane's going okay and mid. Uh, Nisha is ahead of the Invoker, though, on the Pango 27 and 5 against 22 and 5. Okay, that's. Yeah, that's so he's getting the better of him here over Corrosion. Um, maybe with Orb of Corrosion, maybe you can just kill the Forge Spirits, actually. Hmm. Uh, I'll see. It does seem to be the go-to plan here for him, at least. Yep. Exactly what he's doing. Yeah. A lot of damage to BZM as well. It's not quite level 6 here. Not that that's exactly the same as getting level 6 on any other hero, but... How fast do you think Nisha will have to itemize a Lincoln's? Hmm. Because, like I said, that is not an item you generally want to go for. It There's no other spell. The, the, the really good thing about the Lincoln here is no other spell pierces his med community, right? Or his debuff community. Yeah, so tutors. he's guaranteed to block the rupture if he yeah. gets it off beforehand. <laughs> so I would like, I would definitely like to see it as like a second or third item. Sure. He's going to go defusal. Snap, but be able to close the gap. Dude, by here, defusal into... Can you actually just go Diffu Lincolns? Is that good? It doesn't sound too bad when you're playing with Coddle. You might have to. I mean, that sometimes it doesn't matter if it's good, right? Don't you just have to do that at some point? Not necessarily. I mean, I think the, the addition of Roll Up definitely helped Pango against Bloodseeker. Um, it was way worse before that shard. But. See, so getting chased by Mickey. Nice, nice high, high five in five. here. Yeah, even though he knows that uh, MC did lie in the pregame interview. Um, I gonna... mean, Mick is making him pay for it. This is a straight-up flagellance right now. Flagellance? Yep, there you go. A new so word for you today. So much disappointment. Did you never play Darkest Dungeon? No. No. no you don't like good games. Well, I played this... Dota, so what does that tell you? Yeah, well, that's the one exception. Oh, okay. Actually, not true. You play Wing Wing with me, and I enjoy that. All right. Frostbite with the Brambles there as well. Boxy is going to get caught. But the axes from Zai gonna give a little bit of pressure here. All right, Sunstrike zero for two again. on the Sunstrike. Nice yeah. combo there. Frostbite cucking him out of the kill. <laughs> uh, cucking. Unfortunate. BZM really wanted that one, and Ketcher was like, nope, that's mine. Uh, gonna grab that on the Maiden. Uh, that's oh, I mean, it was insurance, whatever. It happened. Yeah, you're playing with two stand-ins. You have only played probably a couple games on Invoker, maybe not even with the CM, so just not there. MC, though, oh, he's going to die again. Feels very bad. I mean, they're tripling down on just making his life a living hell. He doesn't even game. have the Vanguard yet. It's not even close. Yeah. 
Right, Nishi, rupture. okay. The first rupture of the game. He's attempting not to out TP one. out. On strike. Nailed. It's a hit. He's there. All right. Hard to miss when it's on a cliff, it seems. Mickey now. Force the issue. Uh -oh. Stuck inside the ice wall. Yuragi still available to use some spells. Okay. Mickey will have to force out his Wukong's command. Like a little bit of a waste there when they did have blinding light, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. This wasn't the spell that he was likely to want to use in the next two minutes anyway. Radiance so. bottom tower is in danger. World here. Yeah. Nay, I say. And the Good response from Yuragi there. Finding that pango kill is definitely important for OG because yeah. this, this game can very quickly get out of hand if Liquid starts snowballing with their Beastmaster and Pango and Monkey, all three cores having good games. Uh, things can get scary, but Beastmaster definitely has not had as good of a start as I think Liquid were expecting when they first faced these two. Only sitting at the 3k net worth. He's a full thousand behind the Bloodseeker. But he's still 600 ahead of the yeah. enemy offlane. Both offlaners getting very countered. And a little bit different style of offlaners as well. Uh, this patch has been more the Underlord type where you're just getting these auras, right? So Crimson, Pipe, Greaves, depending on what the situation arises. And then for the Beastmaster, this has been kind of the build for years now, it feels like, the helm of the Overlord yeah. at some point in two. Oh, what, what would do you want to go off? You can go off pipe back. here, right? Like pipe is just a, an insane item against Invoker. It's great against Maiden. It's great against Underlord. <laughs> Does he actually want to use his ult? No, he's faking it out. I, I think I think uh, Helm pipe. He might even go pipe before the Overlord. I'm a bit curious to see if he does that. But maybe you have to buy Helm of the Overlord because you're playing against Underlord, and then yeah, it fits. You the lore. You, you outlord him, basically. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Nisha level 8, we have... I don't think we've seen the Rolling Thunder quite yet. Nope. If I'm not mistaken. From BZM's side on the Invoker, he will be going for the Witchblade. I haven't really seen the Exord Invoker all that often. All too much in the last couple years. What's, what's the build for him? That's the thing about Exord Invoker. I actually think yeah, there's a lot of different paths to take. Uh, so you definitely do want to itemize your right click, obviously, because you have so high damage. And he already started out with the treads for attack speed, and now he's going the the, the Witchblade. The alternative way to go is obviously Midas and playing Greedier, uh, but probably has to read that that will be too slow. Oh, he shot. Washbuckle nets him a kill onto Kit Rack, and there's the Rolling Thunder. Taiga's going to be the recipient of this one next to the Lotus Pool. He will die. Very easy pickup from Liquid. Insania going as close as possible in the hope that you get more int, but then he got blinding lit away. But he was still in range. Boxy tried his best there. Mess him up. Looking good for Liquid, though. 11 minutes on a position 5 silencer. That feels good. Pretty damn good. No mana. Nisha, yeah. There's Sun Strike. Sunstrike. Will hit. And the root. Sun. Frostbite won't do enough damage. And he has regen, so it's all in vain, actually. Yeah, it's just true. dead damage. That's a term now. Uh, Learned from BSJ's course, of course. Dead lane, dead damage. Dead damage. 11 Forge Spirit. 4 2, two, two the, the combined meme number. All of it on oh, Pango. So. Okay, just half his health. It's fine. Yeah, this is perfectly balanced. Shield yeah. crash. Kit Rack does get off the frostbite, but this feels like. Yeah, I say minus two. Yes, I do. As Insania, he's gonna get ruptured, but he's gonna be happy with the permanent ten imp. Trying to deny himself. That was, close. But that was a really good try, actually. Good attempt. Not to be. Maelstrom now online for Yuragi. Zai finally has the helm of Dom. So what's he eyeing up now? He's gonna go Overlord first, it looks like. Okay, gay. Okay. We'll get that. BZM's here with the cold snap. Oh, nice tornado. And the one. ice wall. It's not the balance strike. Mickey actually has to use his ult to try to stay alive. He gets the extra armor out of it. But the meteor coming down right on top of his head. No, BZM he's is not the one taking most oh of the damage. Oh my god, if he would have killed anyone there, that would have been a tragedy for OG. And they both played it to the limit. It wasn't really even that close to a kill. Just very much of a waste of time and resources there. Mickey will just return to farming. And Liquid with a very casual 3k lead at 12 and a half minutes. I mean, versus that last patch, how much... Like, I feel like in the last patch, 3k lead at 12 minutes is pretty big. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's, that's still the about case. the same? 
it, it's obviously way more lineup specific. I think something that I've noticed over the games of this tournament is that there's definitely game states that feel different where you'd be like, okay, 5k lead right now is absolutely monumental, but the losing team nowadays feels like they can find their way out of it in more situations than not. A great example was the game we had yesterday between EG and Bedroom. Boker versus Monkey King. First global silence comes out. EZM getting controlled. Sadie has come as well. Nisha misses the swashbuckle, but gets his ult off. Pursuing the invoker. The proc wants his Tiger gets off a nice ult of his own to try and control the enemy team, but looks like EZM will eventually fall. They don't have vision though, but the shield crashes there. Nisha gets the all-important kill on the OG mid laner. A little bit of an X-Factor at play there. Keep in mind how bad Invoker is against Arcane Curse. Oh my god. He, you, you have a very memorable clip of that one. Yeah. Uh, not you personally, yeah. but I would never good old fails of the week. Yeah. With, uh, and Invoker having two billion stacks of Arcane Curse from just casting Invoke and never letting it run out. Yeah. Um, I remember that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember a lot of things. I remember all your greatness. It's an old video. Yeah, that's true. Back that was relevant. Has, it hasn't been much to speak of since then, but we will never forget that video. That's why I'm stuck with you. Tier yeah, 1 tower taken true. out by Liquid. 5k lead for oh, them. fallen. We're going to see the replay here. BZM. Yeah, I think this was an invisible, I mean, not that it was that difficult, an invisible shield crash. Yeah. Did not have vision at all there. OG smoking. They need to start getting some sort of momentum on their side because this is getting a bit scary. I mean, MC has his vanguard, but obviously still quite far behind Zai. 2K behind back. My goodness, I didn't think it was that Oh, Mike with a nice dodge there. Getting out of the brambles and jumping trees. Jumping into a bramble yeah, now. It's always Wants to fight. Again, rolling thunder. Defusal, going to hold Taiga in place. This is such yeah. a bad matchup for Willow. Tango is a nightmare matchup. <laughs> yep. You can't do anything. That's a good area to roll as well. Enough space to be able to lock somebody down. And with that, another kill goes the way of Liquid. Pavis online for Boxy. Yep. Interesting choice. I, I feel like it's not a particularly good Pavis game necessarily. Like, the vast majority of OG's damage is coming from the source of spells. It can give you a little bit of sustainability against Bloodseeker when he runs at you. Um, they're worried about that, you know, the alacrity Bloodseeker. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely going to be useful, but there's, you're always justifying that against alternatives, right? Like, the Caudal could have rushed to pipe this game if they don't want to get it on the Beastmaster as an example. Mm -hmm. Caudal is the... One of the amazing things about this hero's support is that it will find farm if you want it to. Nisha, he wants to, he, he wants to do something, but he gets ruptured first. Yuragi still in the area. They just right-click casually, and they're going to be able to get this kill extremely easily. Nisha's still ruptured, but his entire team is here. He's actually going to use Swashbuckle. He does not care that he's ruptured at all. Looking towards BZM. It's getting pretty close, but they finally do take out Nisha. BZM, if they can clean him up, this will still be very good for Liquid, and they do just that. So a two-for-one, make it three, as Kit Rack takes a tumble. Do they have a cancel? They do. Mind Control showed up just to die. Four one for Liquid. I love the way Nisha played that fight. That was really, really well done. He he endured as long as he could, and then he knows here he swashbuckles right before the Pit of Malice catches him and after the rupture has ended. So you couldn't really have done this any better. And yeah, he will end up dying for it, but he really maximized the output of his hero in that situation. If he stands there and gets caught in the pit, that's the end of the fight probably for him. But this way he dealt an extra thousand damage with his two spells and got in close and personal on the invoker. Teammates could clean that up. This is, uh, this is a really, really substantial lead that Liquid are building for themselves. And they have the luxury of having really good vision too. They're playing with Beastmaster, they're playing with Monkey King. They're gonna keep being able to control the map really well. Kitrek getting spotted there. Yeah, they Tyga. want Taiga. That's who they want. Yeah, they want Taiga for Nisha. And another death on Taiga's resume for this game. He does have quite a bit of shield applied to him right now, but... More in for Insania. And yeah, what are we at now? Real five head. Okay. 16. Not bad, not bad. I don't know what the record is for a position 5 under this stage. Got to be approaching somewhere around as BZM. He goes in Viz, but they have the Sentry. And they have the damage. More int for Insania. They yeah, never the end. They kill him, he loses 2 damage. That, that's fair. That's fair. Because 
For lore implications, Wyvern is a universal hero, but Invoker, who uses all powers of the universe, is an int hero. Well, you're also yeah, very important to make that distinction. It is, because then him losing int is more damage loss. Well, something that's a little bit more actually relevant, losing oh. int, you're losing magic resist now, right? That's true, too. Yeah. So, Silencer did... Not only did Silencer get buffed in that aspect, but they got rid of every non-tier 5 neutral item that dispelled. Yep. That is a huge... That is absolutely huge for the hero. Global Silence is a spell again. They basically re-added it to the pool. Now you have to buy a BKB or a Lotus or a Greaves or whatever the million other items. <laughs> we have to spend money, basically, to counter this hero. Yeah. Unfortunately, all of those items are kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. So you're still... You're going to get them anyway. <laughs> but, but it's true. You don't get them for free. And you don't get the additional one, right? Because in the past, you'd maybe have, like, Lotus and a neutral item. So at least now you need to commit to removing global, and then you can be susceptible to other things. We'll see if the game even gets to that state. You know, those tier four, four neutral items that used to be a thing would be minute 37 at the earliest, and at the rate Liquid are going, I don't know if we're going to get that far. OG really needs to start showing some life, signs of life here in this game. Yeah. Kind of all Liquid, every move, they're controlling the map, they're playing fast. And this is the this is the dream game to East Master in. Like, when you have this kind of a start on your other lanes, the game feels so fluent. Taiga, BKB, Global he'll Silence die. goes off. And he's going to get cleaned up again. What's the worst, what's the worst that can happen? 10k lead for Liquid. Very rare lyrical line coming up. Unnecessary. No, I know. Unnecessary <laughs> jab. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, mine's rare as well, but oh, that's him and Taiga have a connection. They do. You know? Yeah, both very, very positive, positive people. Yeah. Very optimistic. Who's the most. Wait, you just leave a neutral there? Okay. Nisha. Who's the most what? Who's the most toxic? Who's the mo no, not toxic. Who's the most negative pro player? Because that's the person I could have a connection. With. Oh. Hmm. So how does getting, Good how does question. feeling their token work? Because is it the person that, like, once you activate it, it's considered yours? Because you can't share it, right? I actually haven't had that happen to me. I, I don't know. It's very strange. <laughs> Did not notice it was. In fact, it doesn't even have a neutral item for Nisha. Like, not even needing it. All good. Oh, Everyone's yeah, being sure. delivered, but surely. <laughs> well, no, we're at the 20-minute mark now. No, he just doesn't have it, right? Yeah. Oh. He is indeed going exactly there what we thought. Is. Ifu into Lincoln's complete now. For Mentor, is here for a little bit. The structure is now dead. Ooh, this is a nice Auto. guard for a game like this as well. Yeah, recall now added to so his repertoire. They, they cover the map so well already that now they can start playing the Monkey King or the Beast Master just flat out in a sideline, just pull them in to fight. Just added efficiency. This is one of my favorite tier twos for for Pango. Dude, life steal Actual so lifesteal and spell lifesteal, both of which are good. Yep. Love this thing. And 300 night vision. Yep, that's the that's last thing useful. that it gives. That's right. But that's, I mean, obviously he has Lincolns now, but even if you're going to rupture him, he could get a lot of that HP back with one yeah. swash, in theory, as the other Tormentor will go down. OG, get a shard for the old CM. Now, I've noticed that a lot of the supports, <laughs> a lot of these games, we're seeing the exact same support shards constantly getting pro picked because up. we see the same support. Yeah, we're seeing the same support. I mean, Dark Willow's here. We could have seen that's that. True. That would have been a new one. That's right. The that one's really biased. good. It would definitely be yeah. the one they would want this game. The, the Curse Crown one, I think, would just be better. Yeah. Because it's unlikely Maiden gets a good ult off here. She's just going to get torn apart from everything. This is a very, very rough game to be an underfart Maiden in. You, you just can't go in. Like, they can just blow at her and she dies at this point. What's her health? 1,000. Has the specialist oh, array so she can get that split shot on Maiden. Very nice. Wait, <laughs> what, what stats does that give? It gives all stat. But she's not universal. Not truly no. efficient. All right. Outpost taken by OG. The lead has not grown in the last couple minutes. Of course, Liquid haven't looked to go get the old Roshan yet as well. So OG are, I guess you can call it stabilizing to a degree, but... Are they getting the items? Like, at what point do you think that they can fight? Is there something that they're looking for? The BKB for Yuragi would be pretty big, obviously. But he's not 
He's still a full recipe away. As Liquid oh, we're actually going to go for Roche. And it's being scanned, so... Does Liquid have a good idea that this is happening? Oh no, this is not going to end well for Freezing OG. field. Prediction time, they're all going to die. Uh, die, you think? I don't know, Roche is getting pretty low. Yeah, Taiga, he's going to try to block them out with the Bramble. He's going to get stunned right off the bat, though. Yuragi gets the Aegis, so they successfully get Roche, but Liquid still want to fight the Roar and the Pango roll on top of EZM. He's already at half HP, focusing him down very easily. And OG, despite getting Roche and Aegis, they lose the Aegis, they lose bases. Oh, a beautiful ult coming out from Taiga. Is that enough to save anybody? Yes, Yuragi actually gets out. The beautiful Terrorize. All right, incorrect prediction. They only lost three or four. Yeah. Not What's all. The worst and in have? theory, they deny Aegis yeah. to Liquid, That's... right? If you look at it that way. Hey. It's inconsequential, really, at this point, right? Like uh, this. You can see that Insania is opting. He's going to be going for a double rapier here pretty soon. Oh, and it's quick. That's after good. the has yeah. to wait for Hurricane Pike, though. Yeah, Pike first. That makes sense. Okay, they cut him down. Yeah, no BKB. Stun. Now inside that pit, going to proc a second time. Ruptures there right. as well. Nice find. That is a beautiful kill for OG. And now Nisha gets caught again. Well. Nisha, swashbuckle. Sun strike, boom! Awesome. Two cores dead just like that. OG. Oh, Maybe they're back in this thing. Yeah, Mike just went a little bit too far there with no BKB and they punished him immediately. Great, great reaction from OG. And now get to invade and start playing the enemy triangle a little bit maybe push some damage onto the tier two and if nothing else get maybe get some good vision out here taiga is running all the way over here to place what i think will be a deep ward uh, he's thinking about it nope didn't place it Better headshot no. headshot in the tail that more yeah I hit him in the tail tail shot ass shot sounds better does it yeah yuragi bkb now Going for the shard, so he's going to get that pure damage. Gives him more of a fighting chance against Monkey King in the ult. I still don't know if you can realistically stand your ground and fight in there, but I mean, you want the shard. Anyway. Yeah. There you go. Tiger getting caught out again. Gets the Pavis applied, but it's just too much damage to try to mitigate. And just uh, see Mickey there waiting on the Boundless Strike. Wants to wait for Shadow Realm to end. Boundless Strike, when you use it during Shadow Realm, does the stun, but no damage. Because it is based off of your... It's based off of an, an attack, essentially. And obviously Shadow Realm is unattackable. Yuragi inside the Boundless. Off the BKB. Attempting okay, nice to run, but he's going to get chased. Yeah. Will he get oh. out? Oh my god, Ooh. that last hit. Damn, Crimson Guard's pretty good. It is. MC, though, he's the one getting pursued. M MC's pretty dead. Oh, oh, yeah, balance back up. Down Saves his buddy, though. Board. Well worth the sacrifice. Saving Bloodseeker is huge. Top net worth in the game right now. Surprisingly, is sitting on OG for another two seconds before Beastmaster will overtake him now. And the lead, again, no matter what's happened, the lead's still around the same <laughs> that yep. it's been for the last 10 minutes. 22 int, I think, on Insania now. Beastmaster is definitely going to become a bit more of an X factor later in this game as well. We keep talking about the early pressure with this hero, you know, taking control of the map, spamming out the lane with axes, but the BKB piercing stun is big here. Because Bloodseeker has to run in and start smacking people if they want to win fights as OG. He's always going to be susceptible to getting hit by that roar. So I, I wonder if we're actually going to see a Lincolns as part of the build. Oh, okay. He's queued it up just now. So he's preparing for that inevitable problem on the Bloodseeker that he has to solve. And this is the way to do it. It doesn't feel great because it is an expensive item you have to buy. But the alternative is going a standard build and then not getting to play at all in the fights. So you kind of... It's only fair. Pango has to go an item he doesn't want to go for either, so... It, it feels less bad on Pango, though, right? Because it's like... It's such a big part of your hero to be in your ult anyway, that when you're in there, a lot of your net worth doesn't necessarily pay off massively. Whereas for Bloodseeker, every single item slot, he wants to have damage as much as possible to just snowball fights. So it is going to slow him down. Well, I think out. the problem is you don't really have a teammate that's farming well enough that can go for Lincolns for you, right? Yeah, that's also true. Like you can look at the net worth. It's him, and he's on an island. This often happens to Invoker when he doesn't go Midas. Yeah, that's uh, fair. Pretty uncharacteristic for BZM to not buy that when he's playing Exort. And I wonder if he regrets it. At the same time, like, they were getting crushed, right? If he would have gone Midas, it would have been even greedier. But at this point, 
could have maybe paid off. I don't know how much value he really got out of this Witchblade. Um, and now oh. that the Hawk is scouting them out and Liquid have smoked, so they have a good idea where the rest of OG are. Yep. And Taiga, he's going to tank the okay. gank. Life runs right into that. Hello. Hello. It's a bit annoying to take out, but minus two. they find him anyway. Indeed, another minus two. There's oh. the more inside the Wukong. And Underlord, Mr. MC, has dropped as well. So two quick kills for Liquid. Now that death was avoidable after Taiga found them, I would say. I think Mind Control felt safe there, and they weren't going to dive in between the towers, but they ran straight in, straight in there. Actually, there was no tower. They've already taken the mid-tier, too, so even more And now they can poke the high ground. That's the sixth death for MC. This kid Rack is going to get... He had the thing about Talk TM about long-range artillery. Yeah. 1,300 damage there. It the doesn't take eye. much for Liquid to be able to kill him from that far away. And they're going to get this tier, tier three. Might just reset a bit. Or step on Anisha, make sure he doesn't get ruptured. And Liquid are going to be happy with this. Take the Wisdom right here. Oh, yeah. Make Ooh. it close to level 20 talent. Money. Very nice. Monkey King's 20 talents are a bit decent, you would say. Actually, I mean, the stun talent is insane. Invisibility. Lowers the cooldown from 22 to, to 15 on Boundless. He has an interesting talent. I think it's one of the best talents in the game, actually. One of the best 20s. This is really, really good for the hero. Nisha goes into the roll-up form. Oh, global to global save silence him. just to save, make sure he doesn't get caught out in a weird position. A little overly defensive there again on the global, but they can afford it. Yeah, they could especially with go. all that int. You know, Insane, he already basically has full mana again after that. You know? Oh, I thought you were going to make a joke that despite having all that int, he's still using his ulti incorrectly. <laughs> thought that was a little harsh. But I'm not you. No, that's true. I don't bash. I'm a well, very negative person. Yeah, but he knows that. Oh, here comes Roll. Nisha. Yeah, Taiga does get off the shadow round, so not as easy to kill him, but he is here. perpetually slowed and will go down to Boundless Strike. Did require Nisha to ult. Is that enough for them to poke at the high ground? Yeah. They don't really have the Aegis or anything like that. Keep in mind Monkey King with his Boundless Strike with 15 second cooldown, he can get chakra'd as well. Yeah, that's true. And now they also have the cooldown reduction creep. It looks like. Where is it? Do they? At least they have the time warp bar. Where is this? This is going to be the melee rack. Oh, there it is. Just and the... I think Liquid are just going to back away now. It was so big I couldn't find the creep. How much? Uh, how much does it give? Ten percent CDR to all allies. Is that? Wait. It goes up in. Uh, With time. Have a... With time. He's had it for a while. He's had that one for a long time then. Because I guess so. Right now it would be a level three even. Because 30 minutes is the level 3. I don't remember the thresholds, but you're it's probably 15, right. 30. Okay. So he's had that before min minute 15, right? Has he had it since minute 14? I guess. Time to refresh could it. Also, could also be a... Um, could be a tool to bear. Tool to bear, exactly, yeah. yeah. That's never right. happened before. Valve are perfect. Yep, true. Waiting around for a Tormentor, potentially. Uh, Shout sure out to our perfect it. flawless overlords. That's right. And underlords. Not, not that game. We don't smoke that. That's flawless. Dyer's middle tower Talking about the under MC attack. Underlord. Also not flawless. <laughs> <in the game. laughs> Either way. Oh. Not a good day to be an they, Underlord. They're okay. feeding to the enemy Tormentor. All right, this is cool. Grab like the it. Tormentor right here. It's yeah. right back. Very cool. Underlord gets it. All right. The global relocate effectively. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I like it. Nice shard. The Firestorm shard is pretty good. Extra damage. Gains. You can cast on yourself if you want. Don't think you do in this game. You're not really going to run in, but yeah. not much. Can't look confident. Doesn't, uh, really. doesn't heal anymore, right? No. That was a very brief moment in time, I guess. Yeah. Are under attack. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yes. And I think their Tormentor should be up pretty soon. I'm not mistaken. Not sure on the exact time. That's something that could probably be added to the UI is the uh, the Tormentor timers. Spectators, of course. Now that you talked about the healing of Firestorm, you just had me thinking if there could be an interesting way of making an axe for this hero. Oh, they, I, oh they... Liquid actually stole theirs. Okay, I missed that. That was quick. Yeah, was oh, they just swapped them. Yeah. 
What if Underlord Aghanim Scepter could activate Atrophy Aura through some sort of explosion based on how much plus damage you're Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, how about that? Would be really pit, Ice Frog. Really Pit Lord theme. I mean, you got, you got Fiendsgate. Expulsion. You got Fiendsgate in the game, so you have some value to the community. That's good. <laughs> Ice also got the Lycan Ags into the game. Yeah. So he is a detriment to the community. Which one of these is more of a meme, do you think? And which one is the cooler design? <laughs> The real question. I don't know. I had fun casting the the tiny lichen ti. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was oh, actually. Great. I'm not even being sarcastic. That was fun. Yeah, thanks, Lex. Well, ma mainly because of the Christmas tree kit rack. Be careful. I think Lex actually invented Christmas tree. Yeah, I think so too. He is the Dota Santa Claus. Yeah. 17k lead here for Liquid, and we can see that Roche is up, and it's in the bottom right. Is it Radiant side in the day? Yeah, this is a game-defining moment here. I think so. Nisha, Swash, they know they're here. Mickey on the trees. Gonna spot Taiga. He gets cut down with oh, the nice gate. Cool. not gonna be able to follow it up with anything. Nisha, he is ruptured, so he has to stand his ground after the roll-up. Gets off the shield crash a little bit, the damage mitigation, but he's dead. Beautiful rupture, but it's gonna cost them BZM, so it's a one-for-one one to start this fight. Wukong's command, MC trying to get outside of the fearless, boundless strike on the three heroes. Roche. Just watching from afar like a creeper. Nisha bought back into the game. Gonna be able to take out CM and MC's out. Taiga. Oh my god, the bounce deletes him. So it started out pretty damn good for OG, but in the end, Liquid will secure the second rush. I think that was the highest possible impact play a mind control can find in that fight. He stopped the Monkey King for four seconds by putting the gate on top of him, and they used that time to kill Nisha. But again, the, the advantage is just too, it's too much. They have to commit so much into killing this Pango. He buys back, comes back, and the fight's just lost because they've used all their resources. But if they don't, How did he live? if they don't go on him, he's going to ruin their fight as well. So damn it if you do, damn it if you don't kind of situation. And yeah, Liquid probably just going to, I mean, I don't know if they can just straight up high ground here. I think Firestorm plus Invoker is always going to be nasty to push into. Might want to take it easy. Might want to control the map more, get more items up. Uh, did they ever complete a pipe? I think they just never bought that. Oh, yeah, they do have it on Beastmaster. Because that seems to be... I wouldn't even mind them having more than one in order to go high ground in this game. Um, well, they like, would have the Aegis, so high ground will be a little bit easier now. And the cheese is on the Pango, so you can theoretically... If you do get ruptured again during Rolling Thunder, you can just rely on the cheese to keep you alive. Yep. That's pretty nice. Not sure what they used to proc uh, the Lincolns to begin with, but Nisha will have to get... I mean, that's the thing about Panger. You want to use your Swash into roll, but you might just have to roll from, like, pretty far away yeah. to avoid getting your Lincolns proc. And he has the dagger, so... Yeah, but... Should be okay. Pango players are greedy. They want that, that first Swash buff. Right? It's efficient. Uh-oh, Yuragi. Are they going to find him here? Yep. They just might. Angle. They will. Spotted. Abyssal Blade. Well, he's just going to walk away, it looks like. Fiend's Gate's there. Closing some potential pressure. And they can actually use Rupture as well onto Mickey. Got to stand his ground. Tornadoed up. And a Terrorize to force him to run a bit. Take a little extra of that damage from Rupture. Nice defense there from OG. Wukong's command was used for that. Is the Agnum Scepter now online? Oh, BZM needs to be careful not to go over Pango. Okay. He walked forward a little bit more there. That could have been dangerous, but... He's on the trees. They... Fiend's Gate was used, so they have no easy way to destroy the trees. They can spot him, though. There, okay. The Bramble's on top of him, so he's kind of stuck in an awkward position. They're using the Courier to try to scout him out as well, and they do have to jump away. They're trying to kill the Time Lord creep. No! Very important. Now he can upgrade it. Rest in peace, At level Lord. one. Oh, beautiful initiation. Balance strike into Nisha's ult as well. With that shard, the Agnes Scepter now online. The swashbuckles are just doing absolute work. Two dead in the blink of an eye for OG. They buy back out of the Invoker, though. Attempting to defend. Melee Rax is taking heavy damage. His Mickey finally will pop his Wukong's command. Fortification is activated for OG. To delay this as long as possible. There's the Underlord pit. Nisha jumps in. Swash not going to hit anybody. And 
doesn't look like Liquor are going to be able to secure the melee racks, at least not yet. Still forced out the Invoker buyback. Got the tower, got more progress, and didn't lose anything. Still have Ages and Cheese. You can wait for the cooldowns one more time. Make the same play again, and that's probably going to end the and game unless OG can find some. Yeah, and the beautiful rank. thing about this, Mickey is able to TP top, push it out, and he can just re get yeah, they can bring it back. Time. Recall is such a. I think it's possibly undervalued. I feel like the Caudals we've seen in this tournament haven't necessarily bought the shard as much as I would have liked. I think this shard is extremely valuable. It allows you to just play the map differently entirely as a team. Take advantage of it, and with this bigger map, I don't know if it's better or worse than before. It's always having recall has always been right. Really the Time Lord was replaced by an extinct animal in the dinosaur. Triceratops ready. Misha. Yeah, he walks right into the light. Like that it is a dieback for BZM. That is not what you want to see if you're an OG fan. And Nisha and company trying to clean up as much as they can, knowing that they'll likely be able to secure a second set of racks. MC does get out, but the two supports plus mid laner take a tumble. And again, the Aegis is still there. Cheese is still there. It's 35 seconds, though, so it'll likely just expire of its own accord. But without a tier two tower out, I, they could theoretically just go for these, these megas. Yeah, there's no way in hell OG can fight without the Invoker. So this is a, a guaranteed free lane. We're gonna try to make it a bit difficult for them. Nice. MC just barely outranging the Nautilus Strike there. That could have got scary. But second lane goes. Yeah, they go straight top here. 35 seconds is enough. I think so. Don't move seconds. Kong's command and get, go to work. Indeed, basically everything up. Uh, Pango ult in 10 seconds. If they really need to dive. 20 seconds of delay is possible, but oh, oh. Nautilus Strike on the two. And Titan oh, is dead. <laughs> does have flyback. Rips and Garden will not try to mitigate as much damage as possible, but the last of the tier three tower does fall. And they're going to get the official blade initiation onto Yoragi, who drops dead. 80 seconds of no blood seeker. And MC trying to do as much as he can, but GG's are called. And Liquid. Well, they showed up in game number one, that's for sure. This was just an easy game for them, really. It didn't really feel like they faced much adversity. I think OG did an okay job in the very early laning phase, but after that, Liquid just dictating the entire pace of the game. They're making all the moves, they're landing all the combos. 